Welcome to In Focus. I'm your host, Shelby Martin. Today, I am honored to be joined by a true leader for Cal State Fullerton Titans. President Fran Vergie personifies and embodies what CSUF truly stands for. Bittersweet to many, including himself, Fram is set to retire and leave his position effective July 31st. He has spent the last five years guiding us, and without a doubt, he has left a positive impact that will always be remembered. Without further ado, President Vergie, welcome to the show. Shelby, thanks for having me. I'm glad of to be course. here. So you've had a very interesting career path. I mean, you started as a lawyer and then you later served as vice chancellor and the general counsel for the CSU system. Um, looking back 30 years or so, did you ever see yourself becoming a university president? No, no, <laughs> I had no idea. Um, I'm a first generation college student, um, first in my family to go to college. I'm an immigrant to this country and frankly, I'm not sure I knew what a university president was when I, when I got here. Um, I always wanted to be a lawyer and uh, had a long 30-year career doing that. Um, and I thought I was finished and retired. And then I was asked to become the general counsel for uh, the CSU system. And that's when I first got really exposed to what a uh, university president is and does. And I always kind of looked over the fence and said, that is the greatest job in the world. I'll never get to do that. But uh, it looks, if I want to come back someday, what would I like to come back as? University president would be pretty good. And then here I am. I had no idea. So that's proof that anything's possible. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so you stated that this decision to retire was based on a need to spend more time with your family. How difficult was it to come to this decision? And, you know, was there a moment, whether on campus, where you felt it was time? So the real reason why I'm retiring is I think there's a cycle of everything in life. Uh, I want to go out on a high note when things are going really well on campus, and I think things are going really well. Um, and uh, it is a 24-7 job. Uh, I, w I go to bed and wake up as the president, and um, there really is no, it, there's a blur between personal and, and uh, um, time as the president. There's, there's no difference. Uh, so. It, I do want, I won't want to, Julie and I have things we want to pursue in our lives uh, going forward. I don't know what those things are going to be. Uh, it's bitter, bittersweet. We love Cal State Fullerton. I tell people I've regretted the decision a hundred times, but I'm happy with it 101 times. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I don't think there was any one particular moment when I said, okay, it's time. I just knew that uh, we, we've just finished our five-year strategic plan. Um, and I know we have uh, a new five-year plan to put in place, and I know I'm not going to be here for five more years, and that should be done by someone else. We just finished our uh, comprehensive philanthropic campaign, the first one we've ever had, raised $270 million for the campus, and we need to start a new campaign. So someone else needs to start these new firsts, right? Right. So you've, you've made your mark, and you want to let someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Take it. That's awesome. Um, so... Not only are you a first-generation college student, and like you said, you immigrated to the United States at a very young age. I believe you were six, you said? Yeah, five, actually, five. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so you're able to relate and empathize with students here because many of them are also first-gen students, and they also come from you know, immigrant parents. So how have your own unique life experiences shaped your leadership style as the president of our university? So I am very, very grateful to this country for everything that it's given me. Um, I came here when, uh, just shy of my sixth birthday. We uh, immigrated to the United States in 1966, and uh, uh, I was five years old. We came across on a Queen Mary, oh, and wow. knowing it was going to be in my own backyard the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, and I was different than um, the kids on my block. Uh, I spoke differently. I uh, came from a, a different background. And so I know what it's like to be new and um, trying to fit in and trying to figure out. Uh, and as I said, neither one of my parents went to college. They knew I was going to go to college. That was never a question. But when you come from uh, an immigrant family where your parents never went to school, you're either going to be a doctor or a lawyer. That's what you're going to be. And they saw my math grades and they said, you're going to be a lawyer. <laughs> uh, and so that's just what I've always expected I would do. But I can empathize for sure with my students and my kids, our 41,000 kids, um, 
almost 60% of whom are first gen, um, and many are immigrants to this country. And I tell people, I can see our first gen students on our campus. All our campus students are carrying things on their back. They're carrying their backpacks with their books and everything else, but I can see them carrying their families on their backs. Uh, mom and dad, brothers and sisters, especially if they're first in their family to go to college. And I know that burden, um, but it's a burden they take on readily uh, to be the, um, the first for their families to, to cut that path. And our job is to make it as uh, accessible as we can, as welcoming as we can here, as supportive as we can, so that uh, they come, they stay, they graduate, and then they build a, uh, an amazing life. It's amazing. It's built such a strong sense of community. And I can see how you know, welcomed and loved these students feel. I mean, just walking around campus. Well, that's why you know, I have my office in College Park and um, it's, a, it's a great office, but I hate being there. <laughs> I want to be on campus. I, uh, I love walking on campus and talking to students and faculty and visitors. And um, there's so much to share about how great Cal State Fullerton is. Number one in California for graduating women. Number one in California for graduating Latinx students. Number three in the nation for graduating students of color. Um, uh, you know, number 13 in the nation for academic rigor. This is a rigorous academic institution. You know. Oh, absolutely. I studying all the time. <laughs> so um, I want our students to know that they are going to an amazing institution. I want everybody here to be proud and um, maybe swagger a little bit and be proud to be Titans. Um, and that's been a focus of making sure that I'm on campus talking to people all the time about what a great place this is. I feel like that's a very distinct attribute of your presidency. You know, you're always seen walking around campus, holding hands with Julie, saying hi to students. It just creates such a strong sense of community. So. Yeah, I, I, f that for me, the Titan family really means something, that concept of the Titan family. When I came here, I heard about it and I thought, okay, well, you know, that's what everybody says, but no, it's it's a real thing. It, we support each other. We care. We come from all different walks of life, all dis different socioeconomic backgrounds, um, different religious backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, and we come together in this space and we build a community with the idea that we're going to produce culturally agile titans that are going to go out and change the world. So with the amount of time that you've spent here at CSUF, what would you say are some of your core memories from working as president? There's probably too many to count. Um, if you had to pick five or less. Oh, oh gosh. Uh, you know, I, I love athletics. I'm a uh, broken down old college athlete, so I, I <laughs> gravitate toward athletics. So uh, I remember um, the first uh, regional went up at Stanford. It was the ninth inning. Uh, we were down by one run. It was two outs, uh, uh, a three and two count, and a freshman up whose nickname was Jumbo. Oh my gosh. And he hit the ball out of the park, and we won, be beating Stanford to go to the Super Regional. That was really an exciting time. I remember uh, being in my office and having the um, one of the university choirs come into my office with 40 kids and sing to me and to my guests that were there and we were in tears because it was so amazing. Uh, I remember, uh, I tell this story all the time, one night about 9.30 at night walking through McCarthy Hall um, and hearing a ruckus and trying to figure out what is going on. And I opened a door to one of the uh, uh, rooms on McCarthy Hall and there are 20 kids in there and there are equations all over the whiteboard. And I said, what are you guys doing? And they said, math. And I said, do you have a do you have a midterm? No. Are you doing your homework? No. And I said, what are you doing? They said, we love math. Oh my gosh. And I, there was this epiphany for me that students are on this campus doing things that they love, doing the things that make their heart sing. And it's going to create a future for them where they're going to do the rest of these things for the rest of their lives and their lives are going to be blessed and amazing and they're going to br uh, bless the lives of the people around them because they found the thing, their passion on this campus. Uh, whether it's singing or sports or math or engineering or, or politics or whatever it is. Um, and I love that about our campus. That's amazing. And as a student here, I've definitely found the things that make me tick and it's Fullerton definitely has a way of fostering that and fostering that sort of 
community with students who also found their passions. Oh, Shelby, I remember meeting you when you were a freshman and you didn't know what you wanted to do or where you wanted to go. Now look at you. You're still playing the guitar and you're still singing, which is <laughs> wonderful, but you're doing this and you're doing journalism and photography and you have I can see it in your heart and in your eyes that you found the things that make your heart sing. That's, that's what college is all about. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the COVID-19 pandemic, I know we're all tired of talking about it, but it is a part of our university story and unfortunately a part of the story of our world. Um, but it's greatly impacted the college campus experience and it continues to influence the protocol for in-person activities. And now today, when the pandemic first hit, you were presented with a unique set of challenges as a university president. You know, it's a lot of academic institutions had never seen something like this before. So how did you navigate such unforeseen circumstances? Well, I'm really, really proud of what we accomplished as a university through the adversity of the pandemic. You know, we were the first university in the system and one of the first universities in the country to go fully remote. And we did that overnight, uh, literally. Uh, <laughs> we told our campus that we were gonna move all our um, instruction on Zoom in a week. And I think if I had told the, uh, the faculty and students that outside of the pandemic, they would have thought I was absolutely crazy, could never happen, I would have been run out on a rail. But what we did was get together and we actually did it. Within a week, all our classes were online. And then they said, but we can't do everything else. Financial aid can't go online, it went online. Telehealth can't go online, it went online. Mental health counseling can't go online, it went online. And people just stepped up and we, uh, we were amazing to keep um, uh, education going and keep people safe. And we had sort of two touchstones, if you will, and they eventually worked into three. One was the health and safety of our community. We wanted to make sure that everybody was safe and stayed healthy. The second was the continuity of education, making sure no one had to stop uh, or drop out or stop out because we weren't providing services. I didn't want students to lose time. And the third, eventually, after the um, events of, uh, of the summer and the murder of George Floyd was, how do we make sure that we still embrace and care for diversity, equity, inclusion, social justice, creating a community? Um, and we use those three touchstones throughout the pandemic. Are we taking care of health and safety? Are we assuring continuity? And are we assuring inclusion and equity and social justice? And then we were the first of all the campuses to come back. Uh, full time. You know, we came back ahead of everybody else and we just didn't just bring students back, we brought faculty and staff back. There are still campuses in the CSU system and other places that are not back all the way. We've been back all the way for 18 months, almost two years, and I'm very proud of that. We did so safely um, and we learned from what we learned during the pandemic. So we learned that we can actually teach effectively in hybrid situations that uh, during the pandemic, we wired up all our classrooms so that students can zoom in if they can't make it to class. So you can't worry about anymore, well, my car broke down, um, I had to go to the doctor, I had to take care of mom, uh, child care needs. You can still go to class. If, if nothing else on your phone, um, we've learned to I expand access uh, and capacity that way. Um, and there, we've learned that there's some things that you can actually do better online. So. Before the pandemic, most faculty members would not let you record their um, lectures, that. right? I remember that. But during the pandemic, everybody, of course, Zoom, everybody recorded everything. And students said, oh, I went back and listened to that part of the lecture that I didn't really understand. And in my study group, we looked at it and we figured it out. It worked great. Mm -hmm. Then we flipped classrooms. So faculty decided the homework would be the lecture listen to the lecture online, and then come to class, and we'll talk about it and apply it. And that was an amazing um, way to innovate, you know, especially yeah. as a student with a learning disability, being able to go back and like being able to see the things I missed just through the recording of the Zoom. If they talk too fast, I can rewind it. That's, right. It's innovation. So we're, we're and we're creating a repository of those lectures and, 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 and a, a great set of resources so it is 
literally change the way in which we deliver education, and I believe it will continue to change it. We will continue to learn the lessons of the pandemic and be better for it, which is the whole purpose of going through a crisis. Absolutely, and it's made our schools so much more advanced. It's made us so much more resilient. And yeah. do you see that resilience in our community among students? Absolutely. Our students, are, the, th the, the thing that sets Cal State Fullerton students apart from so many other places are our students are already resilient. So I go out into the um, business community all the time to tell everybody how great Cal State Fullerton is. And, and CEOs and CFOs, they'll tell me, hey, half my workforce are Titans. You know, we have 325,000 alums and 80% of them live within 50 miles of our campus. So they'll say half of my uh, workforce are Titans. And I say, well, why do you choose Titans? And they always say the same thing. First, they are resilient. They are hardworking. They came to college as serious students. They wanted that degree. It was really important to them. They weren't just there to mark time. They were there to learn. Number two, Cal State Fullerton provided what I will call immersive experiences. We call them HIPs, high impact practices, where you get your hands dirty or all the way up to your elbows. You get real life experiences, mentorship, internships, uh, 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 extended learning experiences, international experiences. And then they say, My, your students are culturally agile. I have a very diverse workforce. And people come from other places and they're not sure how to handle it. Your students have been living in that diversity. They know the value of difference and how um, it brings people together and it solves problems and it, and it creates innovation. Absolutely. So that's why they choose Titans. That's amazing and I'm so blessed to be in an environment that's to facilitate something like that and it's so diverse. Yeah, well, if, if what w the idea is if you learn this here when you go out into the community, you'll be servant leaders and you'll produce it in your communities whether it's in Orange County, in California or anywhere. That's amazing. Um, so as president, you are constantly meeting and interacting with new people from a variety of backgrounds, so yeah. on a similar note. Um, how is your time as president's President, change the interactions with the people that you come across. Well, the first thing will make you laugh. <laughs> Julie will tell you that before I became president, I hated to have my picture taken. No way. I hated it. I was. It was like. Oh, it was a. It was a. It was a, a chore. Now I don't <laughs> mind at all. I mean, it's. I'm so used to it. I am not. Uh, Julie will also tell you that as a lawyer, you have to be outgoing and and interact with clients. But otherwise, I'm a pretty. I was a pretty shy person. Not anymore. I have I'm trouble there believing that. Time. But it's the truth. And so I, I, uh, this has brought me out of my skin and out of my uh, comfort zone. And um, it's made me much more comfortable with who I am and much more confident of um, what I'm doing because of the purpose of it. If I've got 40,000 students, 41,000 students, 5,000 faculty and staff that I am supporting and um, uh, 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 profiling to everybody, it's really important that I do it well. Uh, right. That I speak up and I speak out. I, I love this place and it needs to be recognized for who it is and what it does. Um, and that's just given me energy and changed the way I operate with people. Wow. I never would have guessed. Ever. I mean, you're always out there smiling, talking to people. You know, you're interviewing people, doing all these things all day, every day. Just go, go, go. Well, I will tell you, my friends from home, um, they say, what happened to you? <laughs> Who are you? We don't know you anymore. Who is this guy? Beca and it's all be from the energy and the love and uh, affection that I have and that I feel from this job. You know, I go walk on campus all the time and I ask students two questions whenever I meet with them. What do you like best about this place? <laughs> and what would you change? And you can't say parking. <laughs> And then I, I hear all the time about what they like best. And almost always they say one of two things. They either say, I love my students, my fellow students. They are amazing. This is where I found my people, my, my uh, uh, group that I'm going to be with for the rest of my life. Definitely. Or almost as often they say, I love my faculty. And then they go to a particular faculty. They'll say, this faculty member saved my life. And I will tell you, Shelby, I've heard that probably 100 times. I walked into class the first day and the faculty member put their cell phone number up on the whiteboard and said, if you need me, call me. And it was one in the morning and I was having a panic attack or 
I was hungry and I, I got kicked out of my apartment and I didn't know who to call. And I called my faculty member. And they saved my life. That is amazing. It is amazing. I've noticed that a lot of the faculty here really do care. You they know, do. There's, there's some amazing professors out there who really go above and beyond for their students. I've had professors ask to come and see me play gigs. I've had professors, you know, offer me advice and support about, you know, what it's like being a young woman in journalism and how to hang, counteract certain things. And it's just, it's so amazing how much they care. You know, they'll sit and talk to you for an hour after class if you need it, you well, know. They give you their time, which is their most valuable resource. But I also, I, and you are absolutely right, our faculty are second to none. They could teach anywhere. We have faculty that uh, uh, either taught or could teach in, in the Ivies or anywhere else, and they come here because they love our, but I, uh, our students. But I also want to give credit where credit's due to our staff. Um, our staff are incredible. Our groundskeepers, look how beautiful our campus is, and yet they are our first, uh, uh, almost like our first responders when people come to campus. They, sh they show people where to go, what to do. They're so kind and loving, and they care about this place. All the staff in all the offices, our um, healthcare staff, our CAPS uh, counselors, our administrators, there is nobody here that doesn't love this place and care about it, which is what ma that's what makes it so special. How State Fullerton, it reminds me of Disneyland because never see trash, never. They're like the silent, unsung heroes. It's just. Well, I love, I, you know, I wa whenever I walk on campus, I always pick up trash. I've and, noticed that. <laughs> and what I, when I first started doing it, um, there was a lot more trash. And now I see people picking up trash. And I think that's fantastic. We have a clean, you know, when I first started here, there were people that didn't um, follow the rule that this is a no smoking area. Really? And now I never see people smoking on campus. So it's, um, it's a culture change. We care about this place. It's a beautiful campus and we should be proud of it. So the hands-on approach that you and your wife, Julie, have taken, it's always been a very distinct attribute of your presidency. Um, so from having students refer to you by your first name, you have your open door policy, and you even rap in music videos. <laughs> um, so this kind of approach, it's really not common for a university president or for a university first lady. So what inspired you two to have this kind of leadership approach and in what ways has it enriched your experiences with Cal State Fullerton? So maybe the first thing to understand is that I came in through the side door, if you will. Um, <laughs> not ever knowing I was going to be a university president and not coming up as uh, a chair and then a dean and then a provost or uh, through the academy, as they would say. I came in through the side. And so I think that allowed me to be ask questions, ask why, um, uh, and, and do things differently. Second of all, I am, uh, this, you know, uh, Julie would tell you I, I re failed re retirement twice. <laughs> I retired from my law firm, and then I retired from general counsel's office, and here I am. So I am here because I love what I do and for no other reason. And the reason that I'm here is students. Um, I love being with students. You all don't understand this yet. When you're 10 years from now, I'm going to ask you this question because we're still going to talk. And I'm going to say, when you step on a college campus, do you still feel that energy? And absolutely you do. A college campus is a special place where you feel hope, vibrancy, promise, future. And that's the students that are there. And so from the day we got here, we wanted to be feed on that and be a part of that. What's the best way to do that? Not sit in your office, not be president so-and-so, not be a part, but be together, be integrated into the Titan family. So I always wanted to be known as Fram because you're all adults, I'm an adult, that should be part of it. Um, and I've always wanted to uh, be a little silly, uh, <laughs> provide access that way. Making fun of yourself is the best way to start breaking down barriers so that you can trust each other, you can know the truth, and you can fix things together. Now, did I ever think I was gonna do a, a, a rap as a president, no, absolutely not. Um, I thought that was crazy when someone brought the idea to me, but I said, hey, what the heck, have fun. 
you know? And if I can make fun of myself that way, then everybody else can laugh a little, uh, laugh a little, laugh a little, <laughs> let down their hair, and uh, be a little bit more informal. And that's how I get things done. That being said, I am going to ask you to make a TikTok with me after this. Okay, <laughs> sure, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's, it, it, it has meant everything. It's set the tone for um, how people get to know us, what they'll share with us. People will walk up and share things that I don't know that they'd share normally with a president because they see that we're vulnerable and, we, and that uh, we're inviting. And that's a good thing to have because I feel like a lot of times when you think of a university president, you think of, oh, it's the big guy who runs the school. I've never seen this person. I don't know what they do. You know, sort of all separate from everybody, above everybody. But the way that you interact with students, it just, it shows that you care. And I think a lot of students are really appreciative of that. I mean, you're everywhere. You're literally everywhere. Well, you know, this job is a huge job. It's like running uh, a city. Uh, it's got infrastructure, uh, retail, housing, <laughs> energy, contracts, finance. So those are all the parts of the job that aren't fun. Right. It would, I wouldn't want to do the job if I couldn't do the fun parts. The fun parts are being with students, going to student performances, going to games, uh, watching capstone projects, uh, walking through the TSU and sitting down and uh, having togos with somebody. I mean, that's <laughs> the fun part of this job. You learn so much. It's so much, ri that's the richness of it. And that's what keeps you going with the rest of it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I don't understand how you're everywhere at once. That's my big question. Cause it's a secret. There's, a, there's more than one of us. But no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> we, we, we never, the real answer is we never want to miss anything. Um, we look everywhere all the time to see what's going on. And uh, if we miss something, we, we're like, oh, man, we wanted to go to that. So last night I was at a, a voice recital for a student, for two students. It was just fantastic. And then, um, you know, we have uh, a baseball game to go to today, and, and we have uh, uh, donors tonight, and we're going to the, uh, our, our opera tonight. It's oh going to be great. It's, gr it's going to be a great night. That's amazing. That's so great that you guys stay involved and stay connected with the community. Um, so switching gears, not many students know that you and Julie have a nonprofit. You guys are the co-founders of it. Um, Yambi of Wanda. I'm sorry if I mispronounced no, it. No, that's right. That's exactly right. Okay, cool. Um, so could you tell us a little bit more about this organization and what your plans are for the nonprofit after you retire? So we always thought when we retired from the law firm that this that we would move to Rwanda and run our, non, our, our nonprofit there. And then I got sidetracked and we went to the um, chancellor's office and I was general counsel. Then we were gonna move to Rwanda and I got sidetracked and came here. So we will go, uh, uh, when we're finished here in July, I think in August or September, we will go to Rwanda for a couple months um, and then we'll decide how often we will be there. But it is, um, it is a passion. We have a preschool there with 250 kids. Wow. Um, we have uh, we built a library and a community center in this village where the preschool is. We have a deaf school for about a hundred kids. Uh, we have uh, an art program in the in the slums of Kigali where we bring kids in and then they do art and then uh, we feed them and they get medical treatment. Uh, we send kids to high performing kids to uh, boarding school. We bring the work to bring them over here to go to college and then go home. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, with a, a company, uh, uh, organization called Bridge to Rwanda, they come over here, they go to school, and then they go back to their community. Um, so we do a whole bunch of things. We have three uh, sewing cooperatives for genocide survivors. Uh, so we will uh, devote time to that. And uh, uh, our uh, plan or hope is let help Rwandans help themselves. Uh, we are not. Uh, we don't provide anything other than to facilitate um, Rwandans helping themselves. That's amazing. Um, so what would you say is the most rewarding part of, you know, having this nonprofit? Uh, being with the kids. There's <laughs> um, uh, uh, children in Rwanda are protein deficient. They don't have enough protein in their diet. Um, and at the um, preschool and at the deaf school, we, ha we give them an egg every day. So we have a laying farm with chickens and we feed them uh, an egg every day. And to see those preschoolers with their egg, uh, <laughs> eating their egg and eating their banana and big smiles on their faces. And when we first started this, only 
parents only sent boys to school to preschool but when oh. they found out that we would feed them they sent their girls to preschool and now instead of girls just going to preschool they're going to elementary school and junior high and high school and now they're going to college yeah so it's transformative oh that is amazing i'm genuinely speechless <laughs> that's so cool um so now going back to your time at CSUF, was there ever a defining moment or just a singular aha moment during your presidency that made you realize this is why I do what I do? And if so, what do you think that would be? There, again, there are many. Um, hearing the stories, because I speak with students all the time, hearing their stories is what uh, makes me know this is what I wanna do. One that stands out, uh, there was a, a, a young man who received a scholarship uh, from the system office. The system office gives a scholarship to every, one scholarship to each campus every year, the Board of Trustees do. Um, and I was gonna meet him at the Board of Trustees meeting and I said, I, don't want, I wanna meet him before. I wanna know him so that when, we're, when we go to Board of Trustees, we're not awkwardly saying hi for the first time, oh, you're my student. Mm -hmm. So we sat down and I said, tell me your story. And he's, he, he said, uh, I moved here from Mexico when I was four or five years old with my mom and my brother and my sister. We live in an apartment right off campus, the same apartment we've been living in for uh, my entire life that since I've come to the United States. My mom works cleaning people's houses and working at, at fa fast food restaurants to, s to keep us uh, fed and healthy. Uh, and Cal State Fullerton was right next door and we didn't even know what it was. He said, I grew up going to elementary school and junior high and high school, not really feeling like I fit. Uh, I had a hard time speaking English when I first got here. I felt like I was an outsider. Uh, people talked about um, immigrants taking jobs and I, I wasn't sure that I belonged. And then one day, uh, when I was in high school, we took a trip to Cal State Fullerton, and I walked on campus, and I felt like I belonged here. People like me were here, and I felt like, oh, this is, this is something special, but I still didn't know what it was. And uh, I went back, and I told my mom about it, and she said, oh, yeah, I'm not sure what goes on over there, but every year, right around May, they play some music, and I don't know what's going on. And Sure enough, they were playing that music in May, and I rode my bike over on campus to find out what was going on so I could tell my mom. And there were thousands of people on campus, and they were all in these funny get-ups, uh, gowns, and I said, what's going on? I was asking people, what? they said, this is commencement. And I said, what's that? It's when you graduate, when you, when you graduate from college. And, and I said, what's that song? That's pomp and circumstance. That's the, what they play when you go up on the stage. And I went home, I rode my bike home, and I said, Mom, that's commencement, and that was Pomp and Circumstance. That's the <laughs> name of that song. And they play that when you graduate. And my mom said, someday, they're gonna play that for you. And he graduated with a 4.0, and he's getting his PhD right now. So that story is, is reflective of 40,000 stories on our campus. And that is why Cal State Fullerton is important. That is why we do what we do. That is why we have to do what we do. We, transform, we transformed his life and the life of his family. Now his, brothers and sis, his brother and sister are gonna go to college, but he's gonna go off and he's gonna build a community that is reflective of inclusion and welcoming and equity and social justice and He's gonna build a life and a community that's reflective of what he found at Cal State Fullerton. You can't ask for a better legacy. No. I mean, being able to spread the heart that Cal State Fullerton has, the, the environment that it fosters, and being able to carry that with you for the rest of your life is something that I know many of us will never ever take for granted. Well, that's what Titans are. Titans are servant leaders. 
<laughs> they are going to go out, and they're not just going to be CEOs and CFOs. They're going to be those things, but right. they're also going to sit on boards of education, the Boys and Girls Club. They're going to serve in um, homeless shelters. They're going to uh, make sure that the food pantries are full. They're going to build community. That's what the future is for all Titans, which is amazing. I think being able to carry the sense of community that you find in a place like this and being able to take that with you is such a special thing. And it's something you can't find at another school. I mean, the fact that you were able to connect with students and you know have that sort of community at a school of over 40,000. I mean, even smaller schools, they don't have the kind of sense of unity and heart that Cal State Fullerton has. And you know, I can see how that motivates you. This is the special blessing that this place is, the biggest undergraduate university in California, and yet full of community of people who care and build a future together. I mean, I, that is, that's secret sauce, that's magic. I mean, when you're going out and you're in a CSUF sweatshirt, people come up to you all the time. They say, oh my gosh, I was an alumni. I loved Cal State Fullerton. How do you like it? What are you majoring in? They, they want to know you, and they're just so excited when they see someone else. And you can tell it follows you for the rest of your life. Yep. I, you know, I want it to be more important in Orange County, but in California to be a, a Titan than it is to be a Trojan or a Bruin or a, an anteater or a cougar or anything else. This is an amazing place and we need to stand tall and be proud of what we do here. And we need to make sure that we come back and support what we do here as well. That's gonna be, I'm gonna be supporting this place for the rest of my life. Really? Absolutely. So we haven't seen the last of you. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. I'm gonna, um, I'll be back to raise money and um, cheer uh, at sporting events and go watch our symphony and listen to our singers sing and um, make sure that this place is as ama stays as amazing as it is. I love that. So as you come close to your retirement, what achievement are you most proud of and for what would you like to be remembered? So when I came to, to Cal State Fullerton and I would go out into the community, what I would hear all the time is, Cal State Fullerton, best kept secret in Orange County. And I, want, I said, best, yes. Secret, no. We are not going to be a secret. I want everybody to know who we are and what we do. And so I set out to articulate the unique, special, um, adventure that Cal State Fullerton is. We are an amazing institution. Uh, we are nationally ranked and nationally recognized, but we're doing it on our own terms. And so my uh, proudest thing is I think that we've, we've gone a long way to do that. We've got more to go <laughs> and more, uh, we need to keep uh, uh, making sure that we are um, on the forefront of everybody's uh, mind as being an amazing place. We need to increase access for students. We need to increase graduation rates. We need to make sure that we continue to make this place a welcoming place for everyone. But I think we've really accomplished that. Uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, social justice have been a center, a centerpiece of everything that I've been uh, pushing. If you go on elevators, you see our uh, principles for social justice everywhere. Um, that is a core value or principle. Uh, that's what got us through the pandemic. That's what will take us to the next level. So I'm very, very proud of that. But mostly I'm proud of, you know, the 12,000, 12,500 uh, graduates that have graduated every year for the last five years that I've been here. That's a lot of people. That's a, that's a big legacy. They're out in the world making a difference. You know, uh, would I have loved to see our basketball team in the final four, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they did. They had a great season. They didn't make it to the final four. But when when uh, the championship uh, came on television, who was singing the national anthem? An astronaut who graduated, who was a, a track athlete at Cal State Fullerton. So she graduated from Cal State Fullerton. She was a track athlete, and she was an astronaut singing the national anthem at the national championship. That, I, I couldn't have written it better. That's a Titan. Yeah, through and through. Very proud of her, but very proud of all of our Titans. So you want to be most remembered for your pride in the Titans and just for you know, the kind of people that we turn out to be in the future? 
I want to be remembered for contributing to the community that is the Titans family um, and expanding and perpetuating it. Yeah. Thank you for joining us to discuss President Virgie's legacy at Cal State Fullerton. After years of leading the Titans to success, it is without a doubt that the entire campus will deeply miss the leader that they have come to know and love. We want to thank President Virgie and wish him the best going forward into retirement. Until next time, I'm Shelby Martin, and this has been In Focus. Thank you.